we are slowly but surely adding skills to our view tool set. The next thing we're going to do is styles and CSS. Now you might be wondering why we're going to deal with styles and CSS in the JavaScript land with view. Let's take a quick detour and talk about how styles should be applied in JavaScript and how they shouldn't be applied. So let's go over to our code right here. And this is the starter kit for 05 index.html in the 05 folder. Now, when we're applying CSS from JavaScript, we can actually use JavaScript and write the CSS ourselves. But really, this isn't the approach that you want to take. It's not scalable, it's not readable, and organization-wise, your CSS is there to style and your JavaScript is there for the interaction. Sometimes you'll see people do things like this. Let's break this out, inspect, go into the console. And what are these? What did we make these? These are H2s, okay? So we'll say document.querySelector H2. And I hope that's large enough to see. We'll scroll down a little bit. Dot H2.style.background is equal to red. And we'll see a little bit of the styling happening in JavaScript. Now this approach, not the best one. I think it is not scalable, really hard to read, especially when you start getting into your CSS and you're wondering where in the world did these styles come from? The way that you should be doing things is document.querySelector. And let's refresh so we can get rid of that red background. Selector H2 and you go class list dot add. And this is the way to do styles in, in plain JavaScript as opposed to the add class method in jQuery. We're going to say add and let's do is danger. I don't know if that's even a Bulma class. Let's detour also. Bulma under docs, modifiers, under typography helpers. We have size helpers. We have responsive. There's colors. Has text danger. That's the one we're looking for. Go back over. Has text danger. And now our class is added to that list. Our styles get taken. And that's really the approach we should be taking with JavaScript and CSS. JavaScript just adds a class, and then CSS takes over and does all the styling. And that's really what we're going to do with Vue. We're going to tell Vue to bind classes directly to our elements, thanks to our directives. We'll close this, refresh, and let's go back to our code. All right, so we have inline classes. Now this one's really easy. We're gonna do a couple different ways. We're gonna have classes up here, and there's three ways to apply classes. And if we wanted to apply styles directly, we can use those as well. Let's get started on the view side of things. We're gonna do a really easy one. We're gonna say div class notification. I am a notification. Now let's say we wanted to make this a green notification. Oh, we are one below. Let's move that up. Very good. So we have I am a notification over here on the right. And let's say we wanted to add is success. Okay. And that's the class we're going to be using. So let's remove this. Now, what would happen if we wanted to add that class only if we had a variable called is success set to true? Let's go down here. We'll add data is successful is equal to true. We'll save that. And up here, we're going to use the techniques we already know about. vbind class is equal to. And the way you use class is you pass in an object. And the first part is the class you want to apply is success. And the second part is the variable you want to check for is truthy or not, is successful. And we'll save that and immediately this class gets applied is success is only going to apply if is successful is true. So we'll go down here, we'll set this to false, save, and immediately that gets removed. So that's how you apply classes in view. You bind to the class, you pass in this object, and you can even do multiple different ones like is large. And I think it's is large. Let's go look at the Bulma docs. Bulma up here for notifications. It's under elements, notification. We'll scroll down, colors, 
and variables. All right, let's use one of the text helpers under modifiers, typography, his size, and let's go with one. So we'll say is size one. And this is how I usually work with Bulma. I'll be working along in my HTML, and then I'll just go visit the docs, go look up what I need, and apply it. Is size one, and let's just say this is a variable for is large. So now we go back to our app, we go down, and we create an is large variable, and set that to true, and let's set this one to true as well. All right, notice our text is gigantic, and very good. Now you're asking how would this possibly be useful? Well, let's say we had a button A class, and let's say button is info, and that'll be a blue button. We did it. And that'll be a success button, so we'll say V on click. And we'll just do a random method name. We'll say celebrate. Down here, we'll create a method for celebrate function. And then here, we'll set both of these to false. And then now we can say this dot is successful. And this would be something you would do, let's say, if you submitted a form. So then when you submit the form, you can say is successful is equal to true. And this dot is large is equal to true. And once we have that, we'll save normal notification. We click we did it. And immediately our notification gets its classes applied. Next up, one thing I want to do, this is starting to get a little bit long and not readable. One thing you can do in Vue is use an object to bind to this class. So instead of writing the object directly here inside of our template, we can use it inside of our Vue instance. So I'll copy this entire thing right here, bring it down. And instead of doing it right there, we're going to create a variable called notification styles. Bring that down here. Notification styles. And let's format this correctly. All right. And we'll say true and true. There we go. Now, the last thing we can do here is pass in an array of variables so that we can style with multiple variables. We're going to create two classes here, one for color. And we'll leave it blank for now. And one for size. And we'll leave that blank for now as well. Now let's comment these out. This is for the inline classes. This is for object classes. And this is for array classes. Now, if we go up here, array classes, we're going to do a little bit of extra work here. We're going to show a couple of radio buttons. Uh, let's do a couple Bulma classes here. And this is just because I've used Bulma a little bit and am familiar with the form classes. We'll say field inside of that control. Inside of that, a label with a class of radio. And inside of that, an input with a type of radio. And I wish it would format that correctly. OK, there we go. So we have our field, which basically gives it a little bit of spacing. Our control, which you are going to use to wrap around radio buttons. And we'll have a radio button here. We'll say type is radio, value is info. And this is going to make things blue. And just bear with me here. It'll all make sense in a second. V model is equal to color. So we'll bind this input to that radio button to that color variable. So whenever this color variable, this radio button gets checked, this color value will equal ins info. And we'll say info. And let's copy this. Another one. This one will be is danger. OK, so now we have our color variable changing based on if we click this button or this button. Now we have to actually apply this somewhere. We'll create a button below this. Button type is button. Class is button. And no extra classes right there. But here we'll say my button. And right now, our button has no classes applied, really blank button. But if we click one of these, the color should change. So if we click this, it does not change. And that's because we didn't bind to the class yet. We didn't bind this color variable to the button class. So we'll say vbind class. And here, instead of doing it as an object right here, because we already have the class name, 
we can just bind that right here inside of an array. We can say color. Now let's break that out so it's a little bit more readable. So is info and is danger. There we go. So a really good technique to use, uh, three different ways. Let's add another one. We'll have this control. Let's copy all this and paste that down here. I know this is getting to be a little bit too much code. We have, let's make this size, size. And this one will be is small, is medium. And let's do a large one. And here, let's do another one for is warning. So now we have three radio buttons for each color and size. Warning. All right, let's give this a try now. We'll hit info, we'll hit large, and large didn't take because we didn't apply it again, so we'll do comma size, since that is an array of all our classes. Now, if we save that, it refreshes info and large, medium, small, warning, danger, large, very nice. So that's how we're gonna apply classes in Vue is we apply a class and then we just make sure that CSS does the rest. No actual styling inside of our JavaScript.